Have y'all been paying attention? Y'all got your 50 wins? If you did, congratulations! We moved on to round two. So, the NBA 2K League, you complete a round one, you won your 50 games, now you're on to round two, and they released a whole bunch of, but not all of the, and sometimes vague information that now we have to interpret. So I'm gonna break it all down. There's some areas that I'm kind of concerned, but then I'm like, I don't really care that much because I'm not trying to be a player in the league. But if I was, I'd be concerned. So I'm being concerned for other people's potential concern. That's what I do. I do that a lot. I don't know why. So one of the many changes is they will no longer be drafting 85 players, but 102. So instead of every team drafting five players each, now there's gonna be like a six man or a bench player. The real question we can ask ourselves, is the bench player gonna live with the team? And if he does, does he just watch him play? Cause it's, they're playing. There's, there's five people on a court usually. Cool. So it seems like they've taken the concerns of people saying, well, you're just gonna draft YouTubers or you're gonna just draft, what else do they say? I don't know, they make a lot of excuses. Let's make sure it's fair. So apparently it's fair. You're gonna be playing with randoms in round two. So here's how it's gonna work. February 2nd comes along. You got your 50 wins. You scroll down in your menu, you're gonna see a game mode called NBA 2K League Round 2 Combine, whatever it's called. So you click on that game mode and you have to choose your position, point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center. So once you actually choose your position, 2K actually chooses preset archetypes for you. So you can't use your own my players. There's a whole list of different my players. You can look through them and decide which one you want to use. But before you do all that, just know what I'm about to say. They said that not all the badges are gonna be maxed out. So for example, I'm a small forward, slasher primary, sharpshooter secondary. So I don't know if that build is in there. It says it's in there. So if you look at the list, you're gonna see the build that I use primarily. But is it gonna be 6'10"? Probably not. Is it gonna be max weight? Probably not. But more importantly than all of that, is it gonna have silver limitless? We don't know. So for me, off rip, there's too many questions. And if I was trying to maximize my chances, I wouldn't use that build. The good thing about using that build for me though is that I learned a lot of paint defense. I've had to go up against people way bigger than me and really learn how to adjust and defend the paint. So let's say you choose your position, say you're a center, then you choose your archetype within that list. You have to play a minimum of 40 games and you have to play those 40 games in different time windows. So I believe they said there's gonna be 12 time windows. For example, let's say on February 2nd from 7 p.m. Eastern to midnight Eastern is one time window. So you have to complete your 40 games in 12 different time windows. They're gonna be different times throughout the day, I guess. So if people have work here or there, but regardless, you might have to skip work or school a day or two, depending on how much you play 2K. I shouldn't say that, but I did it a lot when I was in high school, so. It's not a good idea, really. So as you're playing your 40 games with the character that 2K made for you, you can track your stats and you could actually see videos of your games recorded. Which means that 2K is uploading your games in video format to a server for you to access, which immediately in my mind, I was like, that means the managers are gonna have access to your games too. If it's uploaded to a server and you have access to it, why the managers wouldn't also be able to see your games too. So of course, everybody got to questions. Yo, what's happening with this? What's happening with that? And the managers over the course of the day answered a whole lot of questions. So I'm here to kind of just repeat what they said and answer some of the questions that you probably had. So off rip, what I'm thinking is this. If they're only looking at stats, then I would never hedge. I would never play any help defense because if the randoms I'm playing with don't make the proper rotation, which let's be honest, they will never make the proper rotation. Have you ever played walk-on? <laughs> Have you ever met a guy where you're like, whoa, that was the perfect rotation? Never. Then you might be penalized. So a lot of people were making jokes Adam Rubin, uh, manager of the Pistons said, advice number two, don't get tilted because you have bad teammates. Continue to play smart. Don't force up a bad shot because you haven't touched the ball in five possessions. Play D, rotate properly, continue to help your team even if they're not helping you. Now, none of that stuff is gonna show up on the box scores. <laughs> So the it, it just, I think for me it was more evidence that he was gonna have access to watch your game so they'll be able to see if you're just goofing around and not helping your team, etc. All right, take a look at this beautiful case of pick and roll defense. Now, Bohio's an elite ball handler, we know this. D-Hawk actually used to play on that team. I'm gonna drop this prime video a little bit later, right? So I say I'm gonna hedge, but I won't switch unless it makes sense. It officially made sense because he got ankle broke. The only reason I was able to make that switch, you're gonna watch, I didn't even hesitate the second I saw the ankle breaker, was because I had immediate trust that D-Hawk was gonna pick up my guy and we we're gonna make proper rotation. So now that there's a mismatch, we make another switch, so we return to our guys, I get in good position, and I make the stop. 
There's no way to quantify in box scores what we just did as a team. Our other three players made sure that their guy had no shooting opportunities, and me and D-Hawk just proved that we know how to rotate back and forth and effectively stop the pick and roll here. It just doesn't show up in the box score, and I feel like that the best players might be penalized because of that. It's really all the small stuff on defense that end up making the biggest impact. That's just what I think. There's no real evidence about it, but hey, I can guess, right? A man can guess. So you're gonna be playing with randoms. A lot of people were saying that, oh, the 2K League is so biased. What are we gonna do, guys? They're gonna choose all of the YouTubers. And the draft is nowhere near. Like, bro, we haven't even got to round two. You're already making excuses for why you're not gonna make it? First of all, oh my God, Jesus. Can you imagine already making excuses for a league that you know you're not skilled in? Do you honestly believe you're the top whatever 100? I see so many people making excuses off rip. I'm like, bro, how many YouTubers are trying to make the league? Like G-Size, Hank the Tank, maybe annoying. How much, who? Who are these people I'm missing? Uh, <laughs> Jesus, man. At the end of the day, time and time again, the managers have had to iterate that they're gonna have a fair and equal process, which is why we have to play with randoms. Believe me, if they weren't about having a fair and equal process, I would very much prefer to play with my team. Very much so. Because I, I can trust my team to rotate properly, will have better defensive possessions, which are gonna lead to easier offensive possessions. Yo, I gotta start challenging some of these guys who are apparently so phenomenal, but then YouTubers are gonna get drafted, so they're not gonna make it. Somebody actually brought up a good point. Somebody replied and said, yo, if you guys are actually super fair, maybe you guys should assign people numbers so the managers can't see everybody's PSNs and have favoritism. And I actually thought like, Bro, that might not be a bad idea. And then I think it was famous or somebody replied to it and he was like, yo, people just can go on Twitter and say, yo, I'm number 1307. <laughs> yo, it's my number in case you were curious, manager. And so it would get out anyway and it would just be a waste of everybody's time. <laughs> so you have to, believe it or not, for the sake of yourself and everybody on your team, get on the mic and work together with people you never met before. Now, that is possible on Rainbow Six. That could be possible on other team games, maybe Counter-Strike, but on 2K, I have yet to hop in a Pro-Am game where there's not at least one Kobe Bryant trying to do it himself. And because the, one of the only requirements for round one was hitting 50 wins, there's gonna be those Kobe Bryants, man. You're gonna run, you're gonna run up against them, and they're not gonna be like Kobe, but they're gonna try and imitate Kobe, and they're gonna be nothing like him, because Kobe's amazing. These guys is ass. Just pray for your own sake that he's not running point guard. Or maybe she, I don't know. So they also said you can test different my players in your position, but the 40 games you get has to be with one locked player. So for example, if I wanna be a center, I could test everything and then decide to roll with the rim protector and play my 40 games on there. You could play more than 40 games from my understanding, but the minimum is 40. Here's where it gets interesting. I have come to the conclusion that it makes zero sense to use a sharpshooter in this combine. Based on the information released, we do not know if you can change your jump shot. That is game, set, match, done for being a sharpshooter. If I can't use my A1 jump shots on the Pro-Am, on Combine, there is no way I'm choosing a sharpshooter. They said on a tweet, during the Combine, the NBA 2K League will measure high-level statistics such as points, rebounds, assists, as well as more in-depth statistics such as shot release time, pass to assist, and block efficiency. So if you don't get to choose your jump shot and you're a sharpshooter, you can assume you're gonna be heavily measured based on your ability to release the shot. And depending on the latency of the day, depending on the type of player you have, by the way, they didn't, they never declared height or anything like that yet. If you can't choose the jump shot for your sharpshooter match, done, you gotta learn another archetype. Well, you, you could try, my guy. You know, your teammate might appreciate it, have a pure sharp on the floor, but it's such a huge risk to go in there with a jump shot you don't know about. So I'm hoping they allow us to at least change Yo, my heart is pounding, man. I thought somebody, I, I heard like something break. I think it's the garbage truck outside or I'm getting robbed and I'm recording a video while I'm doing it. One of the two is happening. So you can assume if you're a sharpshooter that you're gonna be measured more than other archetypes based on your ability to release the ball and shoot efficiently from the three point line, which again is another problem. Because as a sharpshooter, you're relying on your team to help get you open with off ball screens, etc. If you're playing with Randizi, sometimes they might not care. If, you, if no one is helping you get open and you're a sharpshooter, you're gonna struggle to get open against any type of good defense. So not only are you relying on your team, but now you don't even know if you can get a consistent shot off 
is too much of a risk. They actually have my build, slashing primary, sharpshooting secondary, and small forward on there, I talked about. But I, will, I won't use it. There's no chance you'll catch me using that build. So you see, like, I, I was thinking of sitting here, I might even have to stream, just talk about my whole thought process, but I've decided on the archetype that I'm gonna use. And without a doubt, it is gonna be a center rim protector. As a rim protector, you're not really required to do too much offensively. I'm gonna set the screen, I'm gonna get my buckets on the roll, right? You'll get your buckets inside because you're gonna be a taller player, you're gonna have height advantage over folks. Of course, take smart shots, you don't wanna chuck anything up, but where you're gonna be measured is on the defensive end more than anything. And on the defensive end, they talked about a stat called block efficiency. I don't know what that is. For those of you who don't play comp pro let me let me break it down like this. In pro -am, there is very rarely a situation in which it makes sense to jump. You're giving up free throws if you do a mistimed jump. I had a debate about it on Twitter because if I'm closing out on a shooter and I'm not gonna reach there in time, it makes sense to click triangle to jump because it adds to the contest. So if I'm jumping to contest a shooter, not necessarily to block it, and I don't get a block on the shooter, does that count as bad block efficiency? So there's so many questions. They've only mentioned a few of the high level and in-depth statistics that they plan on focusing on. On top of the fact that there's no real way to quantify how valuable a player is based on statistics. There's gonna be players in, trust me, Road to the All-Star Game, Road to the Finals, there's always people who find a way to finesse the system. But if I'm right about my prediction that the 2K League managers can see your games on VOD uploaded online to the cloud, then it's a GG because they'll be able to see how you're finessing the system, I guess. I don't know if there's any truth to it, it just makes sense for me. That's what I would do if I was in 2K League. Unfortunately, there's no leader boards which would have been phenomenal can you imagine seeing yourself like trying to get into the top thousand but you're 1200 like oh i got it you know that would be so dope man so you can play like 50 games and you don't really know how hot you're doing you can see your stats but what does that really mean and what's the algorithm that's going to decide whether you make it to round three there's rumors this is i don't know how true this is but i heard you can't speed boost <laughs> If you can't speed boost my guys, I don't even know why they would take that out. Just stop blow buys happening so much. Anyway, regardless, if I, if if speed boosting is gone, I just hope blow buys and snatchbacks, not that they're gone, but I hope they're reduced. Also, a few of the managers have voiced their distaste for the five out offense. It's boring to watch. It takes almost no skill to do. And so they, only a few of them, I don't know what the others are thinking about, but they're saying don't run five out. Which, by the way, is probably gonna be impossible if you're running with randoms because I don't know if you've played walk on before, but those guys can't stand still if their life depended on it. They're always cutting, they're running somewhere all the time, messing up the spacing on the offense. Anyway, I don't wanna hold up your time. Yo, people, I'm not trying to get in the league as a player, but I'm a competitive guy, so I'm gonna try. I wish you guys luck if you're trying to make the league. Please don't be that guy that just ruins everybody else's chances. People dead ass working day and night playing this game to try and make this league. You gonna be the one to ruin that? My guy? Leave them alone, yo. Let them run their thing, bro. Be a team player. And for the sake of God, put on your mic, all right? <laughs> Jeez. Imagine trying to communicate pick and roll defense with a guy who doesn't have a mic. So anyway, I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. If you guys enjoyed this one, drop a like, subscribe if you guys are new. And I'm out. Peace.